Welcome, it's the Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Time for us to go through the pages of our national dailies. We call it Off the Press. Chris Kane de Wandu is on standby. He joins the conversation in no time. Chris Kane, it's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good morning. All right, then. Uh, let's take a look at the Guardian newspaper. Our focus would be on the top uh, stories on the Guardian. Federal government faces tough choice to stabilize economic economy as inflation bites higher. And underneath you have inflation rate jumps to 16.8% in April, highest in eight months. But we've been looking at, you know, double digit inflation consecutively for the past seven years. Fuel scarcity, insecurity hike in Jet A1 compound woes. Don't expect Deceleration until September, RD suggests. MPR may join interest rate hike fair. Flight disruption looms as fuel scarcity worsens. You also have bandit kill six abduct village head in Kanu. Deborah, Yakubu, please arrange two in Sokoto. Deborah, Yakubu, please arrange two in Sokoto. And just before we move away, 80 million Nigerians living with hypertension, 26.7 million receiving treatment. EFCC arrest Accountant General Idris for alleged 80 billionaire fraud. These are the headlines on the Guardian newspaper this morning. From the Guardian, we'll move on next to the nation newspaper. The bold caption for this morning, EFCC arrests federal government's top accountant over 80 billion naira of fraud. Money laundering in real estate suspected AGF faces allegation of overstaying in office. Above the masthead, Silver Tarlin opts not to resign. Amechi Alashadura quit. Supreme Court to hear appeal on Section 84, Subsection 12 on Thursday. Ocean voters can be bought. Oyetola replies Adeliki. Federal government blames tax exemption for revenue loss. More stories on the front page of the nation newspaper. Uh, INEC gives APC PDP others deadline. Parties inform agency of convention venues dates. Delegates a list to be submitted seven days to the primaries. ASO strikes student protest in Ondo or your Ogun State. My support for Yahaya Bello intact, says Hasfat Abiola. Petrol scarcity looms in Ondo State. And those are the top stories. Okay, we can see some more. AKT 2022. APP 6 replacement of candidate. Igbo Yu to endorse Oni. PDP rejects. ANAP poll report. APC candidate Oye Banji calls for a violence free poll. Those are all of the stories on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Away from the Nation, we take a look at the Punch newspaper this morning. Timetable INEC talks tough as 18 parties fail to conduct primaries. Not going back on election timetable June 3rd as deadline. INEC warns parties. APC orders intensify lobbying as commission says terminal date for primary is fixed. PDP postpones governor, senator, or senate primaries for the third time. Cite IPOP sit at home order. The riders you find underneath the board caption on the punch this morning. Now the dollar hit 600 naira at parallel market. Uh, the FX supply shrinks. Amid Failed negotiation, NRC to resume Abuja Kaduna train service. And you also find fraud, EFCC arrest accountant general alleges 800 million naira, I beg your pardon, 80 billion naira diversion. Marketers divert Jet A1 to foreign airlines. Scarcity hits local carriers. There's a lot we have to grapple with as ASU issues you find. Ex-Minister Ford State Varsities and protests, uh, protest rocks southwest Edo. Just before we move away, federal government extends money laundry law to casinos, others, and banned shell account. Inflation hits 16.82%, exceeds IMF's 2022 projection. Okay, and nothing 
Southeast and South presidential, South South presidential aspirant, greedy, selfish. That's what uh, Namdi Kalu is quoted to say. Or Kalu. Uh, you find Lagos school driver bags live jail for defiling a five year old people. And NCDC warns against rats over monkey pox, loss of fever. Some of the headlines you find on The Punch this morning. Away from The porch, uh, Punch, the last paper we are reviewing is the Daily Independent. 30 years after burst pipelines to Lagos Airport haunt airlines, stakeholders say pipelines would have made Jet A1 cheaper. Worried use of tankers to discharge fuel at airport risky. Say 5 million liters of aviation fuel sold at Lagos Airport daily. Other stories on the Daily Independent. Silva withdraws presidential bid back to office. PSC promotes former EFCC boss Magu, others AIG. Police kill gunmen in force and seated home in Anambra. Inflation rises to 16.82%, highest in eight months, amid fuel scarcity in security. Also strike UI allow tech students protest lock major roads in Ibadan. Unions accuse aero management of planning to kill airline. Kick against 40% sack of workforce. Uh, unions allegations unfounded. Management uh, Deborah Samuel. I was a devout Muslim. Quran does not justify killing Tunde Bakari. Court remand suspected killers uh, defended by 34 lawyers. Federal Government Director Boja Kaduna train services resumption. Why I chose Yahya Bello over Southwest President John Aspirant. Hafizat Abiola. Those are the main stories on the Daily Independent this morning. Chris Kende Wandu, thank you for joining us once again. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, let's leave it open to you now on which of the headlines and trust you as we went through the pages of our national dailies. Of course, it has to be the arrest of the Accountant uh, General of the Federation um, by the EFCC. And this brings to question the credibility of some of the people at the hands of affairs in Nigeria. If the Accountant General um, of the Federation could be uh, arrested for alleged fraud, uh, let's continue to use the word is alleged, because um, until he has his finished investigation and he's uh, charged to court and prosecuted, he still uh, remains a suspect. But that is to me is uh, very, very unfortunate because for somebody at that level who should know better for him to, for him to find himself in a situation like this, then that speaks volume. Um, the most uh, 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 annoying aspect of it for me is that from the information released by EFCC, he had been invited several times to come and um, make a response to some of the allegations leveled against him, and he refused to appear before the EFCC and refused their invite. Probably he thinks he's the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, or the vice president, the chief or a governor, the two people that are immune from prosecution. But it's good that EFCC has gone after, has gotten him arrested. I hope that he will have his time in court. And um, if he's fired guilty, um, it's not just only be sacked, it should, shouldn't be sacked. The ICANN, the umbrella body that's in charge of accountants, should also derobe him because definitely to be the um, accountant general of uh, the Federation, he must be a fellow of ICANN. He should also be derobed. By so doing, we send the right signal to individuals who think that um, and just uh, misplaced uh, misuse public trust. Um, and for me, that is that. So I hope that he is not go like this. so many others before him. Oh, we just see a media trial, they just picked up, and after some days, they be left off the hook, and we continue as if nothing happened and life goes on. This case must be seen to the illogical conclusion. All right, uh, let's slide on to the Guardian newspaper. The economy seems to be the main interest for this morning. And the federal government uh, faces tough choices to stabilize economy as inflation bites harder. That's their main story. And uh, we are actually being uh, faced with uh, inflation rate jumping to 168 in April, the highest in eight months. Uh, 
How do you think we can swim out of these troubled waters, Chris? Until we're able to have um, uh, people with the right mindset who can be able to uh, dissect and be able to do it, we we'll probably always find ourselves in this situation. Don't forget, the, in the past few, uh, one or two years, the, the excuse has been that, oh, it was COVID. Because of COVID, that's why we're always going into recession. That's why we're having all the challenges. We have been out of COVID for close to one year now. So, uh, but we should also not take this away from the global trend. There is a lot of a lot happening within the international community and uh, international economic community that goes to show that the economy in most parts of the world is not growing. But we can be able to do much in our part if we can do the need to. I have said it time with price number that a, an economy that is monopolistic in nature can never grow. An economy that depends almost 90% of its foreign exchange um, from oil cannot grow. Once we're able to start looking at other sectors like agriculture, like mining, and um, even telecom, uh, most countries of the world, like India, China, and so many other countries, are making so much money uh, in the area of um, telecommunication. So, on to be able to look at this, uh, this is what we're going to get. We are even talking of um, uh, uh, the growth. Look at our rates when it comes to um, unemployment. It is one of the highest in the world. And we have a lot of people that are fully, that should be fully uh, engaged and uh, they're fully employed, but they cannot find a job. You see graduates coming out of the universities, polytechnics, college of education on a yearly basis. Some people with first class, they find it difficult to get a job. And I have always said, part of the problem also is that we are not doing what we were doing in the past. Uh, Messi, you remember that we used to have what is called NDE. The end, the essence of NDE then, when it was established, I think it was by Babangida, for people, graduates that have graduated to be, they have to learn certain skills. Everybody cannot get a white collar job to work with Plus TV, to work with uh, um, NNPC, NCC, or wherever. Graduates should be taught the skill of acquisition skills so that when they come out, they don't have to start waiting for this um, white collar jobs. That is the problem we are having now. So um, I hope that those uh, within our economic team are able to look in what and make sure that we make sure that this is the border as well. But it's not looking up at all. All right, um, uh, Chris, let's also look at the punch this morning. It talks about INEC and the elections, the fact that you have um, 18 parties failing to conduct their primaries. And INEC is very fixed on not shifting grounds because the deadline is still June the 3rd. What are your thoughts and what does he even make of political parties, especially, you know, those who are saying we want to take the affairs of governance because you have them filing candidates for uh, different offices in the country? The most ridiculous um, that I read is the one by PDP that the reason why he has not been able to uh, conduct his primary is because of the seat at home in the South East. You only have sit at home in the southeast on Monday. Then what happens on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday? That to me is, is just a flimsy excuse. And that goes to show you the unseriousness of the political parties. And that is why some of our, uh, uh, our rival leaders are coming up with this kind of um, uh, insinuation that, oh, let's give Wari six months extension. Let's, give, uh, let's have an interim government that's been canvassed by um, the senior advocates of Nigeria, uh, after Babaland, the uh, rest of them. If the political parties are not even given up to expectation and do what they are supposed to do, then you, you can you now understand whether they are really ready for 2023. INEL has come out with this guideline for long. It has given them, they sat with INEC, they sat and they agreed on this date. The political parties had a meeting with INEC several times, and this date was. So, why are they trying to justify this date? I believe that INEC should be sacrosanct on this issue because any alteration of this of these dates will affect the timeline for INEC to conduct the 2023 election. The political parties should do the need to. A political party, political parties that are just much interested in collecting 100 million naira and 40 million naira for presidential aspirants and shifting the dates because of the money they are going to make. Rather than sticking to the timetable that said it, I never said that June 3rd is, is, the, is the last day for this. 
I think they should just go out and try to do this needful so that we don't have this unnecessary distraction so that INEC can focus itself in planning for the 2023 election. All right, uh, Chris, uh, let's move on to the Daily Independent. Uh, it is talking about um, the scarcity of um, aviation fuel and it um, aptly captions it this way. 30 years after, burst um, pipelines to Lagos Airport haunt airlines. With the rider, stakeholders say pipelines would have made Jet A1 cheaper. Do you agree, Chris? I'm not an expert on aviation, um, on aviation matters, but from what I have read, um, if there is a pipeline that's supposed to be um, uh, transporting uh, uh, those aviation fuel, the Motala Mohammed Airport or um, MM or MM1, then something needs to be done. If that has been in comatose for over 30 years, then we need to, because part of the complaint by the uh, aviation uh, operators is that the cost of transporting um, aviation fuel from the from the uh, from the port to um, to the airport is very very expensive. Don't forget, first and foremost, some custom will disturb you. Police will collect their own. Local government will collect. Um, uh, NATO or whatever they call the association will collect. Any RST will collect. So by the time you add up. Then the progress of the police at, at every check between Apapa and Motala Mohammed and we just to collect their own. When you factor all this into the price of the aviation fuel, then that becomes a problem. But that has not been the issue that has been raised for long. Part of the issue is that the aviation fuel is not even available. And where it is available, it is very, very expensive. I remember the, the press statement um, issued by the operators uh, last week when they wanted to uh, embark on that. It said that it has jumped from what it used to be, 700 naira. Are we saying that it's just because of the transportation alone that it that job? They are also saying that there's a lot of corruption within the system that they cannot get this patient to buy at the right price. I know that there was a soft gap meeting where it was agreed that to be given to them, I think, for about 500 um, or so, uh, for about three months. But that is a short-term uh, measure. What is the long-term measure for this? How would they be able to get this aviation fuel? If you go to the airport now and see the level of rescheduling of flight issues, in fact, you stay at the airport for about three, four hours, the next you are told that your flight has been outrightly cancelled and nobody is giving you any reason for that. And if nothing is done in the days to come, then we are going to have a, the, the, the inevitable is going to happen. There will be total shutdown of the um, aviation sector. And don't forget, aviation is not like um, road transportation or rail transportation. It's a very, very dynamic um, um, industry that if for any reason you not want to start cutting colour, then there's possibility of having some kind of crashes and accident that we used to have in the past, God forbid. So I think the stakeholders, for the federal government, the Ministry of uh, Petroleum, the airline operators and marketers should be able to come together and find a lasting solution to this problem. 80 million Nigerians living with hypertension, 26.7 million receiving treatment. Um, Chris Kendi wondered, does this statistics and figure shock you? You know, shock me, Messi. You said, you, 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 they actually wait in Nigeria, no risk to, to give people hypertension. Okay. Not true now. Problem with the Nigeria now is to give people hypertension. You cannot get a job, you cannot eat. You find it difficult to make a living. Your children are out of school. When you even come out, you are not even sure that you'll be safe, that somebody will not kidnap you, somebody will not pick you up and call for uh, and start asking for us and the rest of them. It is enough to give Nigeria hypertension. So it is not, to me, it's not a surprise. They're just talking about it. I'm sure it is more than that. Most Nigerians now are living in total, not, not only abject poverty, but in fear. In fear that they don't know whether if they go out in the morning, they'll come back there. They are in fear that their children cannot, they cannot find the food for their children. They are in fear because they cannot pay the school of their children. They are in fear that any, at any given time, Nigeria has become endangered species. That in this, this the, uh, the, the, the hypertension level of those Nigeria, not just only hypertension, there are some that are having other illnesses that you want to ask us, how do we get here? Or until we continue to do the right put and make sure that the citizens feel a sense of, a sense of uh, responsibility, they, they believe, they, 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 they kind of relief, and know that they are in a country where the government can, uh, can 
can be able to uh, assuage some of their needs and they'll be able to make a living. This will continue to happen. Problem now is situation where the man of the house is out of job, the man of the house doesn't have anything doing if, if she may be out of job, where she erect a small uh, kiosk here and try to sell uh, the bread and whatever. Uh, town council or local government they destroy the place, uh, pick up all the children and the rest of them, have four children out of school. That is enough for attention. So I am not surprised by that statistic at all. Let's all right, uh, Chris, as we round off, uh, there's this story on the Nation newspaper. We actually talked about it on Top Trending, and there are uh, you know, follow-ups uh, to that. Oshun voters can be bought, Oye Tola replies Adelike. Remember the video that is trending right now, where Adelike was actually uh, bowing ab uh, boasting about his uh, financial prowess. I used to, I used to respect a dancing senator. He's one of the uh, politicians I used to have respect. But um, from the utterances and from what I saw and I heard, I was highly disappointed that somebody at that level, maybe it's all that governance is not about um, bread and butter, um, uh, to mark uh, infrastructure or whatever you call it. This is a loss. And that is what is bringing to the table. I think the Osho, people of Osho should just discard him. Um, and forget about him and look for other candidates because it is high level of irresponsible for somebody of that caliber to be making that. And what is the is he trying to tell us people that they are uh, hungry minded people that can be bought with now? But even at that, you have to realize that such statement also happened um, in the last election in Osho State. We had somebody came out and said that he is richer than Osho, so this is not new. Maybe it's only the line of that same person, that so called big man, to think that uh, this is not the first. You can go back and search. Somebody made that statement that he was, that he is richer than or should say that an individual. So, but that is kind of reckless statement by our political leader. If anybody said that in advance of what is local, we can rest assured that it's a lot immediate. So it is very reckless statement and um, very unbecoming of somebody who wants to aspire to the highest office in Osho State as a governor. All right, thank you so much, uh, Chris uh, Nwando, Chartered Mediator and Conciliator, for your time uh, on of the press for this Tuesday morning. We do appreciate the thoughts that you have shared. Thank you very much for having me, and do have a nice you weekend. Too. All right, that's as much as we uh, can take on off the press for this uh, morning. We'll take you through what happened this day in history in a moment. And when we come back, we'll be going straight to our first conversation for the day. Uh, do join us again.